Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Small Business Interview. Today, I have with me Deb Chang, owner of Ginger Lab, where they make unique ginger beer. Um, and it's a pleasure to have you here today. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, like I'm having some connection issues, so everyone if it's kind of weird, it's because of that. Um, but anyway, um, why don't you tell us the story behind Ginger Lab? Yeah, so Ginger Lab, I started Ginger Lab back in uh, 2016, so it's almost been five years. Um, and at the time, I really hated my day job. <laughs> and I'm like, and I, and I was looking for something more hands on and creative. And so I was like, Oh, why not do something in the food and beverage space? Because I love to eat and I love to drink. Um, and so I think what kind of sparked it was uh, after taking this mixology class, um, where we learn how to make really craft cocktails uh, out of really different ingredients. That's when I realized there's an art <laughs> to making a really balanced and delicious and flavorful cocktail, not just your typical one-to-one -one drink, like your Jack and Coke, your vodka tonic, you know, your Red Bull and vodka, you know, the, the typical party drinks. Um, there was an art and science to making something craft and balanced and delicious. And so from there, we, me and my friends, we started going out and drinking a lot. And that's when I'm like, okay, one, this is getting way too expensive because <laughs> each drink was like at least $14. And two, it's not the best idea to drink and then drive home. And so we're like, why don't we take what we learned in that class and start making cocktails at home? We'll have game nights at home. We could wear our pajamas and like be comfortable, not deal with like traffic and all that. And so that's what we started to do. And um, that's when I found a lot of the cocktails that I liked had ginger beer in it. And that's also when I realized, you know what, I don't, I'm, I'm kind of tired of using the ones in the stores because one, they're just way too sweet. And two, they're just, they don't have that spicy kick that I like. And so I'm like, okay, what, could I make a better ginger beer for the cocktails that I like that call for it? And so that's kind of how it started. And then as I was making it, I found that it's actually pretty good on its own. <laughs> and, you know, because we're using fresh ginger, fresh lemon, nothing artificial, nothing, no, no fake flavorings or imitation flavorings. And so it was very tasty. And I felt like it was also, you know, pretty healthy in the sense that ginger is really good for upset stomach, nausea, digestion. It, you know, it's good for your immunity. It's, you know, it, it's, 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 it's really good for you. And so I'm like, oh, maybe I'm onto something here. And so obviously I gave it out to a lot of friends and family and they all, you know, said it was delicious, but you can never trust your friends and family because they will lie to you. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, I got to find some strangers to give this to because I need, you know, real feedback from people I don't know who won't be nice to me. And so um, I kind of took advantage of a friend. <laughs> well, not took advantage, but he had a food truck and I was like, hey, can I tag along and try to sell my ginger beer and see and get feedback and see what people say. And so he let me and then um, I got it was very well received. And so from there, I'm like, OK, maybe it's not just me who likes this. It's not just my friends and my family who like this, but maybe complete strangers like it, too. And so um, it was, again, like I said, a mix of like, like the perfect timing uh, where I kind of was just like my soul was dying <laughs> in my day job. And it was like the perfect time in my life in terms of. Um, you know, I had no kids. I had been, I just gotten married. Everything was pretty stable for me to kind of venture out and do take on this risky kind of business. <laughs> um, because, you know, it was, it's not like I had any experience brewing ginger beer in the past or, you know, I've done it for like years and years and years at home. It was just something that kind of happened. And so, um, yeah, that's kind of how we started Ginger Lab. And fast forward to today, uh, we're in farmers farmers markets in the area. We're in uh, a few grocery grocery delivery platforms such as Good Eggs and Zero Grocery. We are um, well. I mean, prior to the pandemic, we were in you know quite a few bars, restaurants, and cafes, and we were also gonna be picked up uh, and placed in micro kitchens in some of the tech companies in the area. So it was really starting to grow and flourish, and then the pandemic hit and. Uh, everything kind of just a, a lot of it just came to a halt um but I'm, I'm sure there'll be kind of questions about this later on in the interview so I'll stop there for now 
Yeah, I mean, like that, that, you know, it's been a rough year. Um, so how, how was it like for you since you're since on that side? Like, did, did you guys um, find any novel opportunities because of it or how did you adapt? I mean, I would say it was kind of interesting because when the shelter in place news went out in March, this wasn't like my business wasn't actually the first thing I was thinking about. I was thinking about how I was going to survive at home with a toddler <laughs> because oh. all the, you know, all the daycares were shut down. Everything was shut down. I'm like, Oh my Lord, what am I going to do? Um, and so, uh, so I, I, it was just crazy because I wasn't at the top of my mind and I guess it, I'm very fortunate that things worked out because the farmer's market never shut down um, because it's deemed as essential. It's a grocery store. It, in fact, it's, I would argue it's probably even safer than a grocery store because you're outside, you're in open air, there's sun, there's UV. The aisles, if you would, are much wider. Like there's less people touching the product through the supply chain, right? Um, so thankfully that part, the farmer's market never shut down and that's kind of at least right now where we get the most of our revenue. Um, and so we weren't really affected in that sense. Um, where we were affected again was like the bars, restaurants and cafes. And we all know their situation right now, it's pretty higher. Um, and so we were fortunate enough to, I mean, but I guess if, if you look at what is doing well in the pandemic, it's like delivery, grocery delivery services, all of that. And so we we're fortunate enough to have gotten onto good eggs right before the pandemic happened. And they've just been like blowing through our product, <laughs> you know, like every other week I get like a huge order and I'm like, oh my God, thank God. And same thing with Zero Grocery and they're kind of new, um, but their thing is no plastic. So everything's reusable, everything's in compostable packaging, mostly glass. And so um, it's really cool because they want to help save the planet, you know, with less plastic. And so I, I, yeah, so all of our bottles, as you know, or may not know, um, but they are in glass bottles and we purposely do that because we don't want to put more plastic out into the world. Um, and so we partner with them and they've been blowing up and doing well. And so they've been placing large orders too. Um, so we've been lucky <laughs> in that uh, we've kind of had those partnerships kind of established or in the process before the pandemic happened and so it's not like um we had to pick up from nowhere and then i guess on top of that we always had a website where you could order online um i get that not a lot of people did before because we can't offer free shipping on our growlers because just the packaging alone to keep it cold and it's heavy and you know it's in a 12 by 12 by 12 box which is not the smallest box um to ship something like that, that's, you know, a good size, semi heavy. And within two days, like it just, it, 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 it's so expensive in itself. So I get that a lot of people didn't order online previously because, you know, I, everything's free shipping these days. <laughs> um, but during the pandemic, like our online orders increased by so much. There was, so I guess to give you an idea, typically we used to get maybe two to three orders a month. And that was okay with me because, you know, again, I understand there's like a $20 shipping fee that's, ta you know, tacked on to your order. Um, but during the pandemic, we got maybe like 10 orders a week. So up to 40 orders a month, every yeah. month. And I'm just like, whoa. So I think a lot of it was people supporting, trying to support their, you know, local business or, you know, and, and there's, you know, at a point where, people could not go out and physically get it themselves or they didn't feel comfortable. So they went the, you know, ordering route and that was kind of the only way. So um, yeah, that's kind of what changed and what happened during the pandemic for us. Well, I guess it's still ongoing, but yeah, that's kind of like current state. Well, it's really great to hear that uh, you did get like a boost in sales. Um, and I have your website up so I can share my screen to show people um, where the people where we can order let's see there it is we also we got a few orders from intuit employees too um because they would use their like intuit email address or something so I, that's how i knew but i'm like oh wow <laughs> oh cool yeah. yeah i remember when you guys did um i don't remember if it was like a pop-up or some sort of stand back at the mountain view location and i tried a little bit of your um the ginger beer and it was really good um and we'll oh, get into that more later about like you know like 
what the process is like. I mean, without giving away secret recipe, of course. But, but, um, but yeah. So here's the website, and um, you guys ship nationwide or just through specific states? Yeah. So with the seven pack bottles, which is our twelve ounce bottles, those we ship nationwide because we could pack them into a smaller box. Um, but for the growlers, we only ship it to like the West Coast states or places where shipping from California could get there within two days via ground, um, ground shipping um, instead of like a plane. And so that would be like, I think the farthest is Utah maybe or Idaho. Yeah. I mean, that, that's still pretty far, far reach. And I, I wish, I wish we could ship nationwide and that's something I'm always actively working on. Um, but it, it would just cost so much. So, so I've talked to a lot of like cold press juice companies, you know, the ones that are like, oh, do this cleanse or, you know, these are all fresh cold pressed and need to be drank immediately, kind of those types of uh, juice stores. And they're able to ship um, to you the next day, but their shipping is like $38 just for like the shipping alone. But they add that into the price of their juice. So that, that's why it's like $150 or something, you know, for like 10 bottles or whatever, because they tack on that like $38 shipping price into it. And keep in mind, that's only the shipping cost. It doesn't include the packaging, which could cost a lot if you put ice packs. And I mean, there, I guess most of the juice stores, their, bo their bottles are plastic, so it's less breakable. So they don't have to add that much cushion. But again, like I mentioned, we try to be sustainable and careful of our environment and we try to use glass and with shipping glass you have to have a lot of um you know cushion and packaging some materials to make sure it's safe and it doesn't break in transit so all of that just adds up and it's yeah it's it's very hard to bring that price down without passing it on to the customer that is insane um but at least we can still find it says right here like you guys are still in the mountain view farmers market yep. um, so locals can at least get your, right. your product and and i mean i still think like idaho and, and you just use a pretty far reach um and eventually when you guys grow too you know you can uh sign a deal somewhere to get your <laughs> get your product shipped nationwide yeah, I'd love to get it over to New York. I have like cousins who live there and they're constantly like, why can't you ship us ginger beer? I'm like, because it'll cost us $100. <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know, like Gold Belly or something like that. I mean, I know they're such <laughs> expensive too, but, and the price is probably tagged on. Um, yeah. But some people will buy gifts on there. I think once I, I bought like an $80 pie to gift to my family member, but I mean, it was like a special... <laughs> occasion so I was like okay I'll just do this time see how it works that's true I once sent um uh the crab claws that you get from Florida oh what are they called again but stone crabs the stone crab claws yeah as like a Christmas gift because I knew they really like really liked it and I'm like oh my god the shipping's insane but I under I, I understand why you know I totally get it yeah it's like a like on an emotional level I guess for, yeah. some, for loved ones right yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so, and here are all your, your flavors. So if we wanted to order, it would be, you would just like add it. I guess we would click on it and add it to your cart and $20 flat rate shipping to the um, appropriate, to the necessary states, like the ones that you ship to. Um, I mean, like, so what's, what's the, uh, how, what's the process like? Is it, is it very complicated? Does it take days for you to make ginger beer? And, and I know you said it's non-alcoholic, so it's yep. not like, of fermentation going on or anything yeah um so it does take a few days it takes about five days to make um but yeah we we kind of get into our lab if you will on mondays and that's when we juice like just maybe like 60 pounds of ginger and up to like 100 pounds 120 pounds of uh lemons and it's all like handmade you know we're like the ones if you saw our juicing machine you'd be kind of shocked at kind of just how powerful this tiny little juicer is but it does it does take a lot of time to like kind of work the pro work the ginger and the produce through the juicer um but we found that this juicer is like gives us the best results you know um in terms of flavor and the spiciness that we're looking for but yeah everything's like hand washed hand you know cut hand juiced 
hand mixed. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, uh, and, and that, that all happens in our Santa Clara location, which people can also go to on Mondays. And I know it's not the easiest time frame, but between 11 and 2 p.m., we are open for people to come in and pick up stuff, get refills, um, all that jazz in case they miss the farmer's market on Sundays. Let's see, and where, where would that address be under contact us? If you, yeah, it, this, I, I probably should change my website a little bit and make it smoother. But if you click on the logo, the Ginger Lab, the, yeah. And then if you scroll down on the homepage, keep scrolling, sorry. No problem. Um, show, show people everything then. <laughs> I, I know. Uh, God, this is terrible. Okay, find us. <laughs> oh, there, so there's like my, my smart yes. pick up at our production kitchen right here. Yep. I hmm, I should probably put this higher up <laughs> or create its own page for it. Okay. No worries. I mean, we, we actually, it's probably on your Facebook page too, right? So it I should have, be. Have it right here. I'll close this. Oh gosh. And no. <laughs> now you're going to find all the navigating. flaws. I'm really um, bad at navigating, but it's probably somewhere here. I probably. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on Facebook too often, but uh, I know it's probably here, but yeah, here's <laughs> I mean, and you guys work so hard on your drinks, not only that, but I know you guys also are so have coming up with new flavors, like right oh. here. Uh, oh, those are always so much fun collaborating with other local small businesses. So Boast is like a local roastery. They are literally maybe like half a mile from us, so it's just really cool to kind of work with them on this. So um, Carmelo, who's the guy who founded Boast Coffee, one day he was like, oh, here, um, what if we made like a cold brew ginger beer? I'm like, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> I'm like, I... so the thing about our ginger beers is that it's everything I like. I would never put out a brew that I did not like. And so um, even if other people might like it, right? Like it, I have to like it because I'm making it. Um, and so <laughs> I, makes sense. <laughs> right? Like I personally hate watermelon, cantaloupe and honeydew. So that's why you will never find a watermelon, cantaloupe or a honeydew ginger beer from us. Cause I just, I, I do not like it. Um, and so, so when Carmelo, my friend over at Bose came over and I was like, Hey, try, maybe we should try a coffee ginger beer. I'm like, no, that sounds disgusting. And I'm like, how can that be even any good? But then I tried it and I'm like, oh my God, this is actually very like oddly delicious. <laughs> you know, um, you get both the coffee and the ginger beer flavor and it's super refreshing and smooth. And so I'm not a huge coffee drinker, but there are plenty of times at 4 p.m. where I'm like, I am dying. How am I going to survive another five hours? Especially when the toddler comes home from daycare. I'm like, I need something to get me through. And after drinking this, I'm like, oh my God, it's like the perfect kind of amount of just coffee for me where I'm not still up at like 2 a.m. trying to sleep, especially if I'm drinking it at 4 p.m. And so it's, it's yeah, I, it's our latest thing. I'm super excited about it. Um, I still need to take better pictures of it to post on Instagram to promote it. Um, so that's coming, but yeah, that's that's kind of our latest collaboration with, another local kind of small business. That does sound super cool. I would not have thought of putting ginger uh, or like, yeah, ginger of all things into coffee. It just sounds like super acidic. So yeah. I'm, I'm really intrigued and I'm curious. I would, I would totally try this. Um, and since you mentioned Instagram, I do have your Instagram page up too. So here it is. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, that's, that's really cool. That's really creative. I don't think anyone's ever done this before. Um, yeah. And you guys also have like recipes too. I think I remember seeing somewhere yes, here. on the website. Oh yeah, cocktail recipes, right? Yeah, it was like up on top somewhere. Up on top, yep. Uh, yep. Uh, so these are, so like I was mentioning in the beginning, I found that I was very drawn to a lot of cocktails that had ginger beer in it. And so these are literally our favorite cocktails that contain ginger beer. Um, and most people know about the mule. That's a pretty popular one. But if you scroll down a little, where is it? Dark and Stormy is also popular. The Kentucky Buck. Oh my God. It was just so good with that, with the fresh strawberries in there muddled up. 
And like, there's a, there's one point where I came home every day and I, that's just so, what I was drinking for like a month. <laughs> it's so good. Um, and another one I want to call attention to is uh, the last one, I believe, which is the Pim's Cup. Oh my gosh, I wish more people knew about Pim's. It's so delicious. It's like this liqueur. It's very popular in the UK. Um, but when you blend it in with some ginger beer and like fresh lemon, gin, uh, lime, cucumber, oranges, strawberries, you muddle all of that, you add some like mint in there. It is the most refreshing cocktail ever. Um, perfect for the summer. It's just, ugh, I love it. And if you want to make a non-alcoholic, just ditch the Pims. Just, you know, do the ginger beer with the muddled fruit and stuff. It's also very good. Yeah, it sounds super like refreshing and with the mint and the, the ginger like very like invigorating because you get the, the tingliness of the herbs and the spice. Um, that's very interesting. Um, it's it's super cool to see all this. Like, um, I guess also if so, if, I, if somebody was going to try ginger beer for the first time, um, we can go back to the shop, I guess. Which which one would you recommend first out of all the flavors? I mean, I love anything guava and that's why guava is kind of around year round um so we have our original and guava around year round and then the other flavors are kind of seasonal mm -hmm. um and so right now our current seasonal is blood orange which is also a huge fan favorite we get asked this like all year long when are you gonna have blood orange when are you gonna have blood orange um so blood, prior to blood orange we had spiced apple and then prior to that we had pear so it really kind of like it goes based on the season um but the guava one we constantly have year round because i just love it it's my personal favorite so and it's different um because you don't find like a lot of actually at all fruit flavored ginger beers right and so the original is kind of just like for people who just want to keep it original um but if you want to try something different and unique i would say the guava because that's just uh, so delicious and all your seasonal flavors sound really really unique um and it's uh, so you, you like rotate them like you know like by yeah. the season um so it's not like like they're just limited time um the coffee one's coming out which i'm looking forward to yep. <laughs> um yeah, no, this is super cool. Thank you for sharing uh, everything. And you guys also have catering, it looks like, might as well visit that. Uh, so, you know, if you need lots of ginger beer, you guys, I guess for the office, um, <laughs> you can fill out this form, of course. Um, so yeah, this is super neat. Um, there's nothing like this, super healthy. Um, and yeah, thank you again, uh, Deb, for uh, telling us all about Ginger Lab um, and that, you know, you guys are still open and still running. Yep. And um, yeah, let me actually, let me stop sharing my screen here. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's it's been a pleasure having you and uh, everyone head over to, um, I don't, you, you know, drinkgingerlab.com. I don't know if you guys saw that, but it was drinkgingerlab.com. They have a Facebook and Instagram page um and definitely check them out oh, yay, thank you um Thanks for watching. hold on one sec i think i think i froze uh you're good on my end okay there we go yeah <laughs> yeah uh yeah thank you deborah that, yep, deb, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> deb um and thank you everyone for joining us see you next time Bye. Okay.